welcome to Serpent Song Sanctuary. Down into oh, the deep reaches of Serpent Song. This is one of our um, spare rooms that eventually will be the recording studio. But for now, until I get my outside shed built for this purpose, I've set up some grow lights down here. So today I would like to uh, share with you what these are all about, these little newspaper cups. I posted a picture online of some seed sewing that my neighbor Pat and I did, sewing seeds in these newspaper cups, and I got quite a response, quite a lot of curiosity around that. So I'm going to show you how and why I plant with these newspaper cups. And we're also going to do some, uh, some transplanting and I'll show you kind of the whole mechanics around that. So I feel like I really can't go any further with this video though without saying something about this. This is our Cascadia bioregion flag. The Cascadia bioregion includes where we are now, the Pacific Northwest, and it goes all the way up through British Columbia, maybe a little bit of Alberta as well, a little bit of Yukon, curves around and hits the uh, Alaska coastline, and then it goes all the way down into Northern California. And on some maps, by some people's judgment, it even expands further east into Idaho and Montana and even Wyoming. So I like to think of it as the Fraser and Columbia River basins and all of the watersheds in those areas. So a big shout out to the, uh, the creator of this flag, Alexander Beretich, and also to my friend Brandon Lessinger, who is uh, the director of one of the many, many groups and organizations that, that rally under this banner uh, for the preservation of, of our Cascadia bioregion. And his organization is Cascadia Now at CascadiaNow.org. And if you go in there, they, they support right now, I think about 20 different uh, organizations. There are 501c3, and they're doing a lot of good work. Um, I really, really, really appreciate their, their mission statement that says, as a movement, Cascadia is a positive and inclusive place-based movement focused on building autonomous and equitable local infrastructure that is both resilient and sustainable. The movement is based on the idea of transcending arbitrary state borders and shifting our actions and impacts locally. And boy, does that resonate with everything we're doing here at Serpent Song. So go check them out over at CascadiaNow.org. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get into what we're doing here today. So I made a bunch of these little uh, newspaper cups and I'll show you how I made them in just a moment when I bring you in. I just want to show you my setup here. So <clears throat> I have water available. Excuse me, I've got uh, tree pollen allergies, but I have water available. I brought in some of the uh, starts that we did and they are ready to get into another pot. Some of the starts that we did over at uh, at my, my good friend Pat's uh, light room and Trust me, there's hundreds more that we've been working on transplanting into bigger pots now. So I've got these starts. We'll transplant some of those. We'll also plant a few seeds. I'm not gonna plant everything on camera with you, but I do have a few that I need to get started here as well. And then I also have these guys. So, as you can see, many of those are just absolutely ready to get into bigger pots. All right, um, now, one of the reasons that I really like using these newspaper cups is that when you plant in something like this, ah, you'll see that some of these are really not ready to go yet. They're 
pretty small, these guys here. But then we have these that are just really need to come out. Some of these did not germinate because I, I have a lot of seeds from 2017 and I really am trying to use them up and some just aren't viable anymore, which I fully expected. Okay, so that is the reason that I plant in these individual newspaper cups because this is fine if you're just gonna do uh, one or two seeds in each little section and, uh, and you're gonna let them go ahead and grow until they're ready to go into the ground. But I'm trying to do, uh, I'm trying to do some, some bigger numbers of plantings. I'm trying to, to go into a little bit more production this year because I'm focused on, uh, on really helping to provide the, the local food bank here with uh, some fresh produce, the food bank here on the island. So, uh, this is not serving me very well, and I just got my pot maker. So, let's go ahead and make some pots and plant them and see how we do that. All right, come on over here. <laughs> Let's start with what we need. We are going to need some seedling mix for germination. We are going to need some vermiculite. Definitely a mask and everyone's familiar with these at this point. So the mask uh, for when you're working with the vermiculite because you don't want to breathe that stuff in. Gloves. You definitely want some tags of some sort just to be able to uh, know when and what you planted. Now, here's the neat thing. This is a really cool deal. I love this guy. <laughs> This is a pot maker, and it comes from a place in uh, Ontario, Goodwood, Ontario, called Richter's Verbs, and I will link in the description where, uh, like what, what their address is and their website so that you too can order one for yourself if you would like. <laughs> I'd like to get everybody in on this. <clears throat> and then strips of newspaper, one full page wide and about three and a half inches. And this is the easiest thing in the world, so easy peasy. Now you may be saying, but Sienna, what, are, it's, what about all the, the chemicals in the newspaper? Well, newspaper used to be printed with ink that did indeed contain a lot of cadmium and a lot of lead. However, due to public outcry, uh, that practice has almost completely stopped. And now you'll find the inks are based, primarily soy based, um, but I think there's probably a few other things going on. Check with your newspaper and they'll be able to tell you there's also a, uh, a, uh, a symbol that says soy based ink on some newspapers. Okay, so you saw what I just did here. You kind of line the top edge of the newspaper up with the top of the of the uh, pot maker, and then we'll just wind it around. We don't want to go too tight because then it'll be really difficult to pull off. I like to push in the side that has the the edge of the paper first, just to make sure that really gets well sealed, and then just fold it in from there. Pretty simple. And then this handy dandy little bottom part. Really give it a good push so you mold that paper in really well. And I wouldn't twist because I twisted before and I actually tore the paper. So you'll see there's a nice little mold of the bottom and then kind of slightly wet your fingers just a bit so they grip 
and it just pulls off and you have this beautiful little newspaper pot. Isn't that cool? Haha. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and plant some seeds. So when you get your seedling mix, it's usually going to contain a lot of heat. And this is gonna be a fairly dry affair. Try not to get it all over the place, but yeah, it's pretty dry. So what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of water into that and just get that moistened up a bit. Alright, I'm going to put my gloves on and then just take your little cup. Take the little cup and you want to fill it almost to the top because we do want to leave a little bit of room for that vermiculite. There we go. Alrighty. And this is gonna get messy, so you will need to find a place where you can be a little messy. So now I'm gonna put my mask on. I may sound a little bit more muffled. And let's plant some squash. So I got this really cool Yoshi Zhang Bing Gur squash, which is a really nice green with a beautiful yellow flesh. It is supposedly extremely tasty. So, <clears throat> because I am planning to go ahead and uh, do some production planting here, I can plant a few squash seeds in each one of these. The smaller the seed, the more I just kind of just sprinkle in there. Uh, because I will be pulling them apart, and I'll show you that in a moment as well. All right, so we've got the seeds, and no need to bury them. <laughs> because what we're going to do now... Oh, and this stuff will fly all over the place to be very careful. What we're going to do now is go ahead and top this with a layer of vermiculite, just like that. All right. Yep, and it's flying everywhere. All right, there you go. So it's simple as that, that's so easy. We'll just put that in a tray, just like that. And I'll go ahead and do two, probably. I don't know, I might do, I might do four of these, four of these. Um, but generally I just do two. Uh, little newspaper pots of whatever seed I'm planting and then I'll of course plant in succession. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get some stuff done. I've got a bunch of pots made up and let's see what we do. All right. All right, so I've got the squash all planted up. And I think for now, that's all I'm going to plant. Uh, now, what's really important to do is to go ahead and document. I've written on the back of the squash packet what day I planted the first succession of this. Go ahead and get that mask off. Um, and that's so that when I'm looking through my seed packets, I'll be able to see what I've planted recently and what I might want to go for in the next succession. Now, I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to 
just write in what this is. Yushi squash. Hard to write when it's all moving around like this. And I'm also going to give it a date here on the tag as well. 329-21. There we go. And I'm just going to put that at the beginning. Now, I will fill this tray up. And then what I will do... Oops. Drop that. And then what I'll do is I'll just give everything a little bit of water. Get it nice and uh, hydrated. Because water is life, right? And then once I get all of the tray filled up with the uh, little newspaper pots, I will also fill the bottom of the tray with about an inch of water. Just to get that nice and hydrated and keep it nice and hydrated. And last but not least, we'll cover it. Now this is something else I just wanted to talk about real quick. Usually when you buy these little uh, little kits that have the, the celled planting pots, they come with a really short little uh, lid, little clear lid. And honestly, that's pretty useless because the plants, they get big so fast. I mean, you can see over here, these guys right there. Sorry about the shakiness. There we go. So, if you look at these guys here, oh, these are my fava beans, and they're not looking too happy, and that's because they hit the top of that clear plastic before I had a chance to get the taller one. And that's what it does. They do not like to be trapped. When they want to go up, they want to go up. So I recommend getting the tall dome lids. All right, let's get back in here. All right, what you're going to need for transplanting is a bowl of water, some organic potting soil. I use the indoor and outdoor potting soil. You're gonna need some three and a half to four inch pots. Uh, these guys have been in rotation for quite a few years already. We've been using these for the last five years or so. And of course your seedlings. So let's go ahead and take that out. This is a golden acre green cabbage. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna peel off this newspaper. And these guys, look how ready they are to go. All right, this one bent and looks like it's about to break off, so I'm not gonna try to plant that one. I'm gonna peel out the bottom of the newspaper as well. And you all be kind of tearing a few of the little or smaller roots. Look at this, beautiful root systems coming in. And I'm just gonna dunk it into the water and I'm going to float these little rootlets apart. Can you see that? Can you see what's going on in here? Let's see. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer. And I'm just gonna you know, kind of disturb that that soil block. Yeah, and they start to just really easily pull apart. There we are. See how that is? nice beautiful root system i'm just going to drape it over the edge for now and for each of these three to four inch three and a half to four inch pots i think i think i'll put three of these in because they do get a little larger and don't want them to be too crowded but putting three in the pots i can still keep them indoors until the ground outside is ready for plants to go in, for young plants to go in. All 
right, so you get the idea. This is what we want, what we're going for. Okay. Take a pot and fill it with potting soil, which I have also moistened. Always remember to moisten your soil because it will come pretty dry. And when it's that dry, it's kind of hard to, uh, to moisten up if it doesn't get a chance to sit for a moment. Poke a hole with something right now. <laughs> I just happen to have my, my uh, and you can use your fingers too. But my Sharpie is serving double purpose today. Okay, stick that in there and close it up. And then I'll give these guys a little bit of space from one another. Right, stick that right in the hole and cover it up. Beautiful. So there, you get the idea. So these I will also put into a tray. And I will fill the tray, again, with about an inch of water, but I won't cover these. I will let these just grow under the lights for, well, until they're ready to go outside. And they will be lush and beautiful by the time we're ready to plant. All right, so that's pretty much it. Super simple. I do this because I like to succession plant and I like to be ready with something to go in the ground that will immediately start to come to maturity when the ground's ready. And here in the Pacific Northwest, in this Cascadia bioregion, uh, we have a short-ish growing season. It's certainly long enough for a lot of things to come to maturity if you're only doing one succession. But this year I'm really looking into getting into some production. So I'm going to continue today. I've got my work cut out for me. I've got to transplant all of those guys. i got to finish transplanting these guys, these uh, these cabbages. I gotta plant a bunch of seeds, so I'm gonna be hard at work all day long doing this, doing what I love, and I hope I inspire you to do the same. So get your, get your hands dirty or wear some gloves. <laughs> but yeah, get in there, dig into the earth, and get connected, and ah, I am just in my bliss. So I will see you later. I'm glad that you jumped in here and took a little bit of time to be with me today and I hope to see you again really soon. Until we meet again, I want you to be nourished, to be inspired, and to be transformed. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>